It's, uh, it's nine years since I was here. Um, I went off and did something else for a while. <laughs> and said, can you give it a service? And they did. They did, they did very well, but, but you'd think they'd have tuned it before it left the factory. <laughs> <coughs> One of the things about being a folk songwriter is, well, the purpose of the folk songwriter is to document the times. And sometimes you write songs that you hope will go out of date and out of style. And, uh, this is one that I truly hoped I would never have to sing in the 21st century. It was written by uh, me and a, a woman called Pat Humphreys. And I want to dedicate this song this afternoon to the mothers of Russia and Ukraine.
Who can tell me who Lilith was? Yeah. Yes, I think all those voices were female. For those of you who don't know, Lilith, in some traditions, and in the ancient myths, was Adam's first wife. But she wouldn't tell the line. So God threw her out of the Garden of Eden and fashioned Eve out of Adam's rib. And that's all you need to know to understand this song. And I want to dedicate the last verse of this song to the young women like Grace Tame and Brittany Higgins. We have picked up that mantle and run with it so beautifully. She is never born with Adam and she stood there at his side. She would not be subjugated, she would not be denied. They consigned her to the underworld, but she would not be his bride. But there's life in the old girl yet. She struggled through the centuries to make her voice be she was burned alive and tortured for the meaning of a word. When they called her witch and heretic, she spoke on undeterred. There's life in the old girl yet. There's life in the old girl yet. And sister, you better bet. We can't afford not to remember what the world wants to forget. There's life in Now those of you who are old folkies and are well steeped in the traditions of folk music, that's what we call a chorus. Okay? <laughs> and we have choruses for several reasons. First, so that you know what the song's actually about. And secondly, so you can sing along, okay? So it goes, there's life in the old girl yet, and sister, you better bet. We can't afford not to remember what the world wants to forget. There's life in the old girl yet. And if you only get the first and last slides, you know, there's life in the old girl yet, that's okay. Okay, you wanna try that? There's life in the old girl yet. And sister, you better bet. We can't afford not to remember what the world wants to forget. There's life in the old girl yet. When she wrote her stories down, she had to change her woman's name. But the spirit deep inside her was never to be tamed. Even in the darkest mill, she felt the rising of the flame. And there's life in the old girl yet. When she fought and died for franchise, she was ridiculed and scorned. But the day a woman voted first, she knew the time had turned. And while cellulite and sentiment would like her to return, there's life in the old girl yet. Yeah, there's life in the old girl yet. Yeah. And sister, you better bed. We can't afford them to what the world wants to forget There's life in the old girl yet Now they'll tell you that it's over That the battle has been won But it's only for the history That this song should be sung But the spirit of the young Lilith lives She'll outlast the sun For there's life in the old girl yet She lives in every woman Who will know for the violence she suffers in the patriarchy's name She lives in every young girl who will never wear that shame And there's life in the old girl yet There's life in the old girl yet And sister you better bed We can't afford not to remember what the world wants to forget there's life in the old girl yet. What's wrong? There's life in the old girl yet. And sister, and sister, you better.
here. I hope there's some more for you to do later. It's Anzac Day. My wife Charlotte used to work for the city of Perth and uh, as some of you may know, the SAS Regiment, Special Air Force, Special Air Services Regiment is based in Perth. And whenever the soldiers would come home from wherever they were uh, in the Middle East, the council would hold a reception for them. And the SAS soldiers don't march in the marches when the other soldiers do, because we're not supposed to know who they are. And uh, at the reception where the SAS soldiers did go, Charlotte noticed a man standing over in a corner who seemed really on edge. And she spoke to the regimental sergeant major, the RSM, and said, look, is that guy okay? He seems to be a bit off. And the RSM said to her, no, that's okay. He'll be fine. We'll be fine. They say the army when they ask me what it does now. But the truth is that I simply cannot say. In reality, I don't know what he's doing. When the call comes and he has to go away. Sometimes he's gone for months and all I know is Baghdad. And I never ask the question anymore. And the boys have learned that they can't dig too deeply. All they know is that their dad has gone to war. All I can do is hold him when he's screaming, wake him when he whimpers in the night, tell him everything will be all right, love. When I know that things will never be all right, and now we live. West Australia, though we come from New South Wales, and I feel like a widow in waiting, waiting for my love to leave the grave. He didn't have to be a SS or commando, he could have stayed an ordinary army. But he wanted to be more than just a soldier. He's always driven to be the best he can. And so I've waited while he's gone to fight for freedom. Or whatever is the cause they say this time. I don't want to know exactly what he's doing. But I can't help wondering if you're on his mind. All I can do is hold.
lead a normal kind of life. But there's nothing really normal in the living of an SS of a mother's private wife. And I'm not the only one who waits in anguish for the call that says what we don't want enough. So we joke about the things they might be doing. And we pray this is the last time that they'll go. All I can do is hold him when he's screaming, wake him when he whimpers in the night. Tell him everything will be all right, love. When we know that things will never be all right. And now we live in West Australia, though we come from And I feel like a widow in waiting, waiting for my love to leave the rest. I feel like a widow in waiting, waiting for my love to leave the rest. Did you see her? Did you see her? 
Seba? The Princess Royal? Did you? No. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Because she opened it. She was here for all of three days, and she opened the Royal Easter Show. She's my favorite Royal. And this is a song by a Canadian singer-songwriter called Nancy White, and I've had to update it a little. But I sing this song in Commonwealth solidarity. <laughs> This is a very much a sing-along song. This is a, 
This song has the easiest chorus of just about anything I've ever written. And it's very much for singing. Have you got that? Yes, yes I have. I'll teach you the chorus when we get there. Really sing. Don't tell me that the time is wrong Don't tell me that we're cheese and chalk Don't tell me you can't sing this song Don't tell me you can't walk this talk Just tell me that you're on the road Tell me that you just can't wait Tell me that you'll share the load Tell me that it's not too late If you don't stand
There's sorrow in these walls, but defiance lives here too. In memory of the millions slaughtered by the few. Here lives peace and here lives terror. Here lives anguish, here lives shame. And those who walk within these walls will never be the same. On the streets of old Berlin, in the pavement set in brass, the names of all the families rounded up to face the gas. Daughter, son, and son Their voices call within these walls. Come listen here a while. Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem. Never to forget. At least we owe them that. Yad Vashem. Where was the hand of God in the camp and in the mound, in the overflowing chambers, in the grass spattered with blood, in the ever smoking chimneys, in the ashes on the tide? Those voices scream within. And cannot be denied. Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem. Never to forget, at least we owe them that. Yad Vashem. And the righteous among nations, whose names are listed here, who refuse to bow to terror. Who refuse to live in fear, who at the risk of their own lives, their firm and steady hand, would we stand with them in courage? Would we sink in shifting sands? In the Palestinian towns, in the fields of Vietnam, in the villages of England, human blood is all the same. Christian, Muslim, Jew or Jane, come walk with me within these walls, you'll never be the same. Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem, never to forget, at least we owe them that, Yad Vashem. But we owe them more than that, Yad Vashem. concentration camps was written the words Arbeit macht frei and that means work will make you free. So to the person who wrote 
Vax Marked Fry, and who obviously thinks that being asked to take a vaccine, which will help not only you but your whole community, that that is equivalent to the slaughter of six million Jews and six million others, including people with disabilities and people from the gay community. To a person who thinks that those two things are equal, I say this. Yes, they're all there. Good. 
Wonderful. Okay, this is a song about the rainbow flag. People used to ask me what it meant, and I would say, you know, the usual stuff, but it's every colour of the rainbow, so it's inclusive of everybody. And then I thought, well, what do the colours mean to me, each of the colours? So that's where this song came from. And this is going to be amazing. <laughs>
thank you for coming out for this hour. I'm always minded when I, I'm you know, programmed to see them earlier than about 4 p.m. I'm reminded of the story of Dame Ellie Melba, who was contracted to do some uh, recordings for the ABC, and her agent called her and said, they want to do some recordings next Tuesday, is that okay with you? And she said, yes, that's fine. And uh, her agent said, well, the, the driver will pick you up at 7.30 for an o'clock start. She said, yes, that's fine. <laughs> and the driver arrived at 7.30 a.m. <laughs> And apparently Danielle was still in her nightgown and she came to the, to the door and said, See, at this hour, young man, I can't even spit. <laughs> so that's kind of how I feel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I always stand up for this song because it, it, it's, it's the most passionate in my repertoire. And, I always am worried that I might do an injury to either myself or to my instrument. <laughs> but before I sing it, I have to tell you that uh, we have some CDs at the back. <laughs> and uh, they're, just, oops, they're just straight up there, and uh, I'm sure that um, Charlotte, who is there, will be very happy to, to send you one. But if you want songs that are not on, that CD, which is a double live CD, by the way. It's me and, well, it's me, but it's also some other people. Um, if, you, if you want songs that are not there, and they're not on CD anymore, um, we have sold our last uh, studio recorded, recorded CDs, but I can tell you that my songs are on iTunes like everyone else's. My songs are on iTunes for the whole world to see. They're up there with Beyonce and the Beatles and Elvis. And you can download them for just a small fee. <laughs> okay, uh, I simply cannot sing this song without just hoping that my high school French teacher, Miss Payne, would be proud of me. Um, when I come to festivals like this, people are singing in all sorts of languages. Even though this is a 100% Australian performance uh, festival, there are still people singing in these wonderful, you know, South Pacific languages and Asian languages. And I am one of the world's truly monolingual people. But I found this song a long time ago now, and I sing it to keep up my street credit festivals. Okay? <laughs> Songs, the sad life and the mature lady yet. 
Peace. Give it another hand.